Welcome to the Babies in Business Podcast. Join your hosts, Rachel and Avram Gonzalez, real life parents and business partners. Each week on Babies in Business, Rachel and Avram create a space for entrepreneurial parents to find their own way. They'll dive into insights on topics like leadership, efficiency, self awareness, budgeting and human psychology as they nurture their family and build their business. Here's your hosts, Avram and Rachel. Welcome back to the Babies in Business podcast. This is Avram Gonzalez, joined by my fabulous co-host, Rachel Gonzalez. And we've got a fun topic here today. It's what you know versus all the experts and your mom. Everybody has their opinion on how to raise your baby. Everybody has their opinion on how you should run your business. It's funny the lessons, the things that intersect when you have this discussion, what is essentially intuition versus the world. So Rachel, what has you excited about today's episode? Quite a few things, actually. A lot of things that just come up for us. We, Abram said, there's so much unsolicited advice out there and Sometimes we let that make us feel inferior and we feel like maybe we're not doing the right thing or we're the best parents. But someone told me once that we are the best parents for our child. That's interesting. Like you're the one that came here with all the equipment. Yeah. Most necessary to raise that child. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this discussion is going to take us a little bit deep today, friends. We're going to be talking about some of the tools and things that we've used to cope with the onslaught of unsolicited advice, the overabundance of information that's out there that can help you or even hurt you in this journey called life and raising a baby, and then navigating those times in our lives, especially with a newborn, that we may not be at our best. We might be actually at some of our lowest points how to cope with that, how to make the choices that you can feel good about, maybe in spite of some of the advice that you're being given. Or like that part of you that's screaming inside when somebody's telling you you should do this or you should do that, somewhere you know that's not the right thing to do. We're going to talk about all of that and more on today's episode. So Rachel, I'd love it if you would share a little bit about some of the foundational things that we have done or that really inform how we look at intuition versus the world. I know part of it's like how we were raised, some of the discussions we've had. I'd love for you to share about that. Yeah. So, you know, we both have very different upbringings. (laughs) You're an only child and I have 10 siblings. 10 (laughs) siblings. I am seven from the top. So there are six siblings above me and four below There are seven girls and three boys, me being one of the eight girls, including myself. And growing up with a big family, in my case, was not so great. I felt really neglected. And I we've had many discussions, you and I, about how we were raised. I just adore you, and you're just such a sweet person, and that's what drew me to you initially. And... Um, so I've quizzed you a lot on how you grew up and how your parents did things, but we really, we really had some really in-depth conversations about having a child way before we had a child. And we talked about some of like the rules of the road. What are some of the things that are really important and like that we do or that we not do? And then just having like clarity on how we're going to raise him like core values for a business that they guide us and they help us really decide whether we're living up to what we wanted to do for him. So there were certain things that you didn't perhaps love or enjoy about your upbringing that you thought, gosh, I'm going to do different or the opposite of that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Yeah, certain things, certain opportunities that we want to afford. You brought up the core values of business being something that's similar. I believe that a lot. We share on our 
weekly team meetings at Digital Harvest, our business, our, one of our core values and what it means to us that week. We have four core values. It guides everything that we do. And I think it makes decision making easier in the business because if it's reflective of our core values, it's a go. If it's not, then we don't do it. And we're taking that same approach with our baby. And although we don't have those core values for our household etched in stone yet, we've had enough conversations to get a vibe or an idea. So at least we're headed in a certain direction. But those things are becoming more and more important for us to know what we know and what's going to be right for us. Yeah, for sure. And going more into the topic of like unsolicited advice. We're given so much information, so much opinions, so many opinions from different people, different sources. And there are a lot of things like simple things like sleep props. Don't ever train your baby to sleep only in a dark room with a noise machine. Don't ever let them sleep on you in like a baby carrier. Don't take them on too many car rides because they might get used to that car <laughs> noise. Right. And <laughs> they won't be able to sleep without it. Exactly. You're screwed. Yeah. So there's a lot of that. And here I am sitting on the couch with my Moby wrap and I have my sweet little boy here. He's sleeping on me. And I just, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, okay, so where does intuition play into that? This little boy is really tired and it's not okay for him to sleep on me. I enjoy it. He enjoys it. It makes us, our bond, stronger. And I just really question, do people say not to have these sleep props because it's going to be harder in the long run for the parent to wean them and for the parents to have freedom and things like that that we value so much? I just shake my head because... I have waited so long to have a child, and I am ecstatic about all the opportunities that I get to have with him. So in, in looking at shoulds of, we're talking about sleep here, what are you, how are you navigating that specifically when you know that something different might be required right now? There are times when I am so exhausted that I can't keep my eyes open. I have zero energy. And so I, I lay down. I'm ready to go to bed. Maybe he's in his crib. And then I hear him. And oh gosh, I get up feeling like a zombie. And the thing that I do is I hold him and I tell him how much I love him because I do love him. And I sit with him and I just try to find his energy what he's feeling and instead of pushing my agenda on him please just shut up please just lay down please just go to sleep please do this or whatever it is or like having those angry feelings towards him i just try to release all of the thoughts that i have for myself and let him be him and just me be present with him and i find more often than not he calms down within moments yeah recognition for what he truly needs in that moment what you were there searching for or looking for and we've built this this framework the first two months of having a baby and building a business at the same time and that framework is and that regularity has come from a couple of tools that we've been leaning on one of which is a tool philosophy book it's called baby wise and it's all about sleep and feeding and raising a healthy child. The thing that we loved so much about this book was that it gave you the tools to recognize what's going on with your child and give them that at the appropriate time versus like setting a timer and making sure that your baby sleeps to the timer or eats to the timer. That rigidity, those like hard, fast rules don't really give room for that intuition. That's something that we started bumping up against right away. And what we loved about BabyWise was that there are no hard, fast rules, but you are able to create your own reality with your kiddo. The ability to have a schedule has definitely helped in those times when we've woken up at night. Maybe it's not the usual time. What does that tell us? It tells us like something else is going on with our kid. 
Yeah. Yep. Building a business while raising a family can be tough to juggle for any entrepreneur. Knowing where to focus and how to spend your limited time is critical to your success. That's why Babies in Business has produced and made available a fantastic audio resource for you. It's titled, Five Key Focus Areas to Build a Profitable Business Without Burnout. During this short training, Rachel and Avram peel back the curtain on their secrets to building a business that serves your family, your dreams, and beyond. To download your free copy of the Five Key Focus Areas, Go to babiesandbiz.com slash download. Again, that's babiesandbiz, B-I-Z dot com slash download to get your free copy. We hope you enjoy. Now, back to the podcast. Another thing that goes beyond just the unsolicited advice is the overabundance of advice. And I know that Oftentimes, if I've had a particular uh, symptom, I've been one of the people that goes, well, actually, I'm not one of those people, but uh, I have gone online and I've looked it up to see what's going on and then ended up being more anxious and nervous after doing so. And so we've taken a little bit of a different approach to that. Yeah. You're a researcher. <laughs> you love looking stuff up. I do. So what are you doing with that overabundance? Yeah. So I just choose my sources. I choose to go with like authors that are known for the information or my trusted advisors, those kinds of things. But I also, I just try to block out the noise that comes from like social media. Yeah. I'm in some groups that are specific baby wise groups or mom groups and, uh, Moms are saying certain things, and I've seen some posts that, gosh, they're just so worried and concerned about certain things, and for what, really? And here he is fussing a little bit. We're going to get him some food. So I, I see some moms in these groups are really worried about, like, something that they researched online or whatever it is, and I'm just able, like we talked about earlier, like the core values and where we want to go with our child and how we want to help him be in the world that I can filter what's going to help me and what it's not. And so there are some times that I block people because their comments are not helpful or they're unkind and we don't need to feel any worse about being bad mom or a bad dad or something because we already do that to ourselves yeah just unplugging yep i know that i've been a part of some business groups before where it's like gosh i was always the one that was either giving all the time or there were people that were complaining i was giving out but wasn't getting anything back ever or like you said the complaining yeah. and just unplugged from those groups so you have the ability to do that too when it seems like a lot when anxiety is running high when you're doing a lot of your research probably a good indication it's time to unplug that'll definitely be helpful last thing we wanted to talk about today on our episode is how to manage all this when you're not feeling your best so it's easy to tap into your intuition and what you know is true when you are feeling your best but when everything is new to you your schedule's turned upside down you may not have had the sleep that you're used to be having or the nutrition or the same regular, in this, in that, then what do you do? What's left? And we've been talking a lot about this. It's a frequent theme that Rachel and I share. It's giving each other and ourselves grace. This word grace has come up a lot in these first few months because we're trying to handle it the best way that we can. But when everything is already stacked against you, the last thing that you require is you beating yourself up or maybe doing something that you thought was the best choice and turned that it didn't work. Maybe you decided to try to push your kid to take that nap that you're pretty sure they need. And they're like, oh my gosh, now they're overtired. Are you going to give yourself grace that you were doing your best? The intention was there? Yeah. Yeah, and when we're not feeling our best, sometimes 
for me, I just sit with the feelings. So if I'm frustrated or something like that, some kind of negative emotion, I just try to sit with it, but I don't put it off on my son. I, when I interact with him, I give him all of my good energy um, because I really have, I have literally waited so long to have children and I am so excited to have him in my life and I just rely on that absolute love and the fact that I asked for this child and so I have made the commitment to myself I am not going to complain about anything that comes up yes things are hard yes things are way different than what I expected but I have made the commitment to not complain because I am so grateful for the opportunity to be a mom and I work really hard at managing my expectations because I feel myself getting frustrated when I have expectations. I'm not saying that you don't, shouldn't have expectations, but when we force expectations on another human being, that's when frustration can happen on his side and on my side. In one of the groups, on Facebook, I actually blocked a woman because she said specifically in her post something about, I hate my life. I hate my child. I hate this whole thing. And while I understand that people are going through their own situation, I choose to not be influenced by that because I don't need to hear those words in my head because I can't relate to that. I don't hate anything about this situation, even though I may be overly tired or struggling. I need to be careful. And when I'm judgmental, I'm less available to him. When I'm not at my best, I really try to rely on you, Ephraim, and uh, letting you know how I'm feeling. And you come in and you support me in ways that you just wouldn't even know. Yeah, you can be that barometer for your partner. We have that blessed situation with the two of us here and being able to work from home, have all this time, a bit more stability, I would say, than perhaps every family has it, and yet still working through a lot of the same expectations in the journey that we have every single day here with a baby and business. So that's it for today's episode. We're going to be talking more about expectations and how to deal with the frustration of things not going your way in future episodes. But that's what we have here today for what you know versus all the experts and your mom. If you're listening right now and you're loving this episode, you know somebody that would benefit from it, please share it with them. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast and leave us a review. Let us know what you loved about it. We'd love to hear from you. And last but not least, in the comment section of this episode, we'd love to hear what some of the tools are that you deploy with your baby, with your business, to help know what you know, despite what all the experts are saying. How do you stay strong? How do you navigate? What's your foundation? Any and all that and more, we'd love to hear from you. Please let us know your favorite tools, books, and resources. We'd love to hear that. And with that, we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for, bye for now. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of the Babies and Business Podcast. Who do you know that would benefit from hearing this episode? Share it with them and post about it on social media. You can find the show notes for this episode, free downloads, and connect with the rest of the community at babiesandbiz.com. We'll see you next time.